the pleasures of coming to Florida every year is visiting Epcot Center in Orlando. There's so much to see here. They have pavilions for all kinds of technical and interesting scientific things like energy and land. But also there's an area here called the World Showcase. And it's pavilions from every different country. And they all have their own gardens. Not only colorful, but you learn a lot of different things here. I like to go around to each one and take notes. And I find a lot of ideas that I can take home to my garden. Let's see if we can find a few of them. Well, this looks like we're right in the middle of the Rockies. Look at all those trees growing out of the mountains. This must have been something to construct. This is a Canadian pavilion. And around the building, just filled with beds of flowers. Here's a good idea. Mix the colors of mums to give this rippling effect. Geraniums all amongst the rocks. And again, they've mixed the colors here. And notice the lots of water reflecting pools. Now they've also put in just beds of solid masses of colors, all in different heights. Here's some cannas behind. And these, of course, come in red and pink, and they bloom all summer long. You have to dig them up. In most parts of our country, they'll have the roots in the wintertime because they'll freeze, but you can store them. Here's some mums, some tiny button mums with the yellow centers. And mums are an awful nice plant in the garden because they last so long. You can buy them by the pot and put them into your garden, or you can grow them yourself. It's very easy. Right next to those, for a totally different color, are fibrous begonias. Notice the leaves have a very interesting color, too. Now, the Canadian Pavilion is a very interesting garden because it's all perennials. And a lot of people like an old-fashioned perennial garden. Perennials, since they live all year long, are very easy to take care of. There's not much to do with them. But, of course, they have a much shorter blooming period. But tucked in with the water is a very interesting garden. Now, here, breaking up the expanse of lawn are beds with lots of different trees, awful lot of color. It's really a spectacular garden. One of my favorites at Epcot Center. Notice the nice use of water and the walks. And they've really mixed the colors. There's so much to see here. Well, now we're in Britain. And, of course, we're going to have a little more formal gardens here. Notice the change of architecture. All the buildings reflect that country that we're representing. Here's a lot of mixed colors. And, of course, what's an English garden without roses? A lot of roses here. Notice this, an interesting effect here. They've combined tree roses with beds of dwarf or miniature roses, all surrounded or divided by boxwood hedges. A very formal look. And talk about roses. Now, these are all miniature roses. Very easy to grow. A spectacular array of color. And when you look at a rose, you know, each flower is so perfect. And it was amazing. On the miniature roses, they're the same way, just perfect. Look how little that is. They're very nice for small flower arrangements. And I understand they're just as easy to grow as the larger roses. Look at that, just as the bud is opening. That's a, that's a perfect time to cut them for a flower arrangement. And these just keep blooming and blooming all summer long. Well, now we're in Morocco. And again, the building reflects the country, but outside they have a very unusual flower bed. This is coleus, but trimmed in a hedge shape. See where all the cuts are there? They just go along with hedge trimmers and chop, chop, chop away and form it into a square shape. And I got thinking, this is really quite nice for a square foot garden. I think I'd try one with different colors of coleus and just shear them into a box shape. Now, combining with that, they had some zinnias. This is, I think, the Dasher series. It comes in about four or five colors. Very low growing, lots of flowers, and brilliant color. It's a good zinnia to have. Well, now we're in China. Notice all the architecture here. It really puts you in the feeling of being right in that country. Again, they used flowers that are native there. You notice those white poles look like bamboo. And, of course, we have lots of lily ponds, reflecting water, 
You know, a building is so pretty when it's reflected in the water. Sometimes I don't know whether to look at the reflection or the building itself. What a peaceful, tranquil setting here. And if there's no wind out, then the water is perfectly smooth. But notice also that when there is a little wind, there's a ripple to the water. And that adds a nice interest. Everything seems to just glimmer and, and shake a little bit. The gardens around the buildings are really spectacular. This is Japan. Notice a total different way to have their gardens. These are azaleas in a rocky setting, waterfalls, nice ponds. Here's a beautiful landscaping done with nothing but grass and rocks and a few flower beds. When you get tired of walking around, you can hop on any one of the many rides that they have here. And then you can see the gardens from up high and from a distance. That adds a new dimension to it, too. I hope you've learned something and you'll be able to use some of these ideas in your backyard. Mm -hmm.